Hi guys, it's Matt here from PilotPracticeExams.com where you can pass your pilot exams in half the time. So let's have a look at all the charts that you're going to need in your navigation and cross country um, and just give you a quick overview so you know what each one is and roughly what it does. So this isn't a detailed look at any, but it'll give you an overview of all of them. So first of all, let's have a look at the VNC versus the VTC. Okay, so the VTC is the terminal chart and the VNC is the visual navigation chart. So if we look at as an example here, if we have a look down there, that's Albury in New South Wales, and there's Sydney. So the VTC covers this part here, but it covers it in a lot of detail. So now let's look at the detail covered in the Sydney VNC, the Visual Navigation Chart. There's Albury there, okay, there's Canberra, and there's Sydney. So the VNC covers that whole area, whereas remember back here, the VTC only covered that area in and around Sydney. So that's Let's now take a look at some other details on the two. So let's put them a zoomed in version of them side by side. So this is the VTC and this is the VNC. Okay, I'll just move that one over a little bit. Now, first of all, a few things you're going to notice. This one here has a, a VFR route going down the coast. So this is the VTC. The VNC doesn't even show that. Okay, it shows the Western Sydney one out here, um, but it doesn't show the, let's have a look at this one here. Okay, it doesn't show the Bankstown approach and departure, and it doesn't show the, actually it shows one of those, sorry, um, but not the other, but it doesn't, doesn't show this coastal one. Now, the other thing, this one here doesn't have all these restricted airspace details, um, you know, it's easy to see, um, and it actually doesn't show all of them. So that's why if you're flying in and around major city areas that have VTCs, you need to look up both your VNC and your VTC. They contain very different details. Now, the other thing that the VTC is going to have is these information boxes here. Okay, so for operations in this area, um, use CTAP 120. And they'll often tell you, like, for example, the Gold Coast one tells you, you know, that northbound you fly at this height and southbound you fly at this height. It tells you where to make radio calls. This one here is the same going down the coast there. It's, it's got the details on uh, what heights you fly, or it tells you to go and look at AIP, URSA, supplement, such and such, for a Sydney special procedure. Okay. Now, um, they do have a bit of radio information on them there as well. Um, for example, there's the CTAF information, the tower information. Okay, there's more there about the NDBs and stuff, Holsworthy CTAF. So that's on the VTC. The VNC also has a bit of that. So it's got your FIA or area frequency there. It's got some uh, Richmond CTAF and tower, etc. So you just need to look at both. Okay, um, now let's compare some other things. So just get rid of those out of the road. Now, Often when we look up our weather, okay, so when we want to look up our weather, we're going to get an R4 or something like this. Now to get that, we're going to have to head on over to uh, NAPES or Air Services, and we need to select the area that's appropriate. So in this case, it's Area 21, which when you click on that, it punches in the code 9120, because that's the true area code. And then we click Submit. And when we click Submit, up comes our R4. Now, when in these weather details for the area weather, they often mention that the weather north and south of, say, two points, uh, which you draw a line between, is like this, and below the line is like something else. So what they just here, have a look. Um, ranges south of CAPT, um, no, so isolated showers, sea and coast north of UDA until 21 Zulu time, and C out to C, south of YMER. Okay, so what we do is we head on over to our PCA chart, which looks a little bit like this, or like this if we zoom it in, and we look for those points that they're talking about. Now, I can't remember exactly what they were, but let's say it was YSNW. Now, what about if they said um, south of Y, south of Willy? UDA, sorry, that was UDA there. So there's UDA and Willie's up there. What you would do is you draw a line from UDA to Willie, and when they talk about north Willie UDA, they'll be talking about that area, and when they talk about southwest of Willie UDA, they'll be talking about that area there. So that's your PCA, and notice it's got the area there, number 21, which corresponds with 
number 21 or 9210. Okay, there. So uh, one other quick thing about that, that you, can, you the only weather you're allowed to use it when you're uh, planning cross countries legally is air services. Now, NAPES is an app that accesses air services weather. And if you, you're using it, unfortunately, it doesn't tell air services that you're logging in. So if you haven't logged into air services once in six months, they pause your account. If you don't log in in 12 months, they delete your account. So even if you are using this successfully, once every six months, you must go and log into air services directly. Or they'll uh, lock your account. So let's get rid of those. They're the PCAs. Now, this is the low en route or en route low chart. And it's very, very handy for when you're flying airport to airport. It has some really quick reference stuff on it. So straight up, if you want to fly from, say, Bathurst to Parks, straight up it has your uh, heading there, 271, to fly to Parks. 093, to fly to Bathurst. Distance, 73. Lowest safe altitude, uh, 6100. Okay? Now, the other thing that they, they also have... The CTAF information. Now, you, sh you, you should look at that for your lower safe altitude, but don't always assume it's right. Because even just this week, Oz Runways and Avplan had to put out a notice to everyone that there was an error in one of the updated uh, maps, and I think it was an en route low. So um, if, if you get that wrong, that could cost you your life because you're flying a mountain. So yes, that's quick. Grab it. But then go over to your WAC chart or your VNC chart and check, depending on the scale. So this is a WAC chart. WAC means wide area chart. Okay, now if we look at parks to Bathurst and we draw a line along there, what this, where the lowest safe altitude comes from is anything within 10 nautical miles either side of that line. So straight up we can see that it's probably going to be that mountain and that tower there. That's 5055. Therefore... 1,000 feet above that would be 6055, and then they just round it off to the nearest 100, which makes it 6100. So we can confirm that's correct, but I would quickly race along here and check all these points, okay? Because you don't, if you stray off track, you don't want to fly into a mountain, believe me. So, okay, so that's a wide area chart. Now, a wide area chart, where they're really handy for is when you're flying out, say, west um, or in regional country areas. They have very easily identifiable radio frequencies and the lines where the radio frequencies change. Now, the brown means class E, which is above 8,500, class A, which we don't need to worry about that. The green is going to be um, for class G airspace. And any CTAFs or NDB frequencies, things like that, are going to be uh, in these little rocket boxes or whatever you call them. And then it's also going to have your danger areas. That's probably a... Uh, it's a mine, so they do explosives, so you want to avoid that area. So they're also going to have some parachute areas, little glider symbols, especially if you're heading down through the southern highlands between, say, Sydney and uh, Canberra. There's a lot of gliding operations they'll show up. Okay, so that's your wide area chart. And that's basically an overview of all of your charts you're going to need. Now, where, which ones are you allowed to take in and out of your exams? On my website, pilotpracticeexams.com, if you go to the PPL page or the RPL page, you can scroll right down the bottom. Now, the RAA, they actually give you the maps that you'll need in the exam. RPL and PPL have a list, and you must stick very accurately to that list about what you can and can't take in. Now, I've uh, been doing this for quite a while, and a lot of students have forgotten to take things that are on their list. Don't. It makes it very, very hard. Okay, so read through that list carefully. So that's um, your charts in a nutshell. Now, I have a heap of videos on my YouTube channel if you subscribe to my other videos. I've also got um, pilotpracticeexams.com, which has all the RAA, RPL, and PPL exams. Um, and there you can basically save about 30 to 50 hours study. I've got a heap of videos on how to study properly to save you your time. And then we also have a massive Facebook group. It's 400 plus now of Australian students who are studying RAA, RPL, and PPL, and also just former students. So jump in those. Um, all the links for that are on the website in various locations. Um, on the login page, it has them. So feel free to jump over there and check us out. Give us, Please give us a like, a share, or a comment, because that's the only way YouTube knows that this stuff's worth uh, sharing to other pilots and gives it a priority over some of the junk that's out there. So 
Matt from PrivatePracticesExams.com, where you can pass in half the time.